Hi girls, today we are going to see about position vector. Position vector is a vector which denotes the position of a particle at any instant of time with respect to some reference frame or coordinate system. And you see this diagram. Here P is the point and the coordinates are X, Y and Z. Then the position is given by the formula R vector is equal to X i cap plus Y j cap plus Z k cap where i cap, j cap and k cap are unit vectors. So here this vector represents the position of a, a particle at this instant. And so when you see this example you can understand easily and there is a graph given. Here there are four positions P, Q, R, S and we can find out what is the position of these particles. When you see the position of particle P, R P vector is equal to 3 i cap. So when you see this diagram, you see there are 3 divisions and so 3 i cap and uh, it is in x axis. So no need to write j and k cap because it is on the x axis. When you see this point q, you produce the line on x axis and y axis and on x axis is meet at uh, 5 and in y axis meet at 4. Then you can write r q vector is equal to 5 i cap plus 4 j cap. Similarly, when you take this point R and here when you take the point R, the point R is on the x-axis alone. So, no, no need to mention I cap, uh, sorry, J cap and K cap. So, we can write R, R vector is equal to minus 2 I cap. Here minus sign is because it is on the negative x-axis. And similarly, when you take for the point S, here when you take this point S, you produce the line on x axis and y axis a on x axis and y axis so here uh, the point s uh, is produced and we have three divisions on x axis and six divisions on y axis and so you can write this as or s cap is equal to 3 i cap minus 6 j cap here there are three divisions in x axis and uh, six divisions on y axis but on the reverse direction that is in the negative direction so 3 i cap minus 6 j cap and similarly here one example is given a person is uh, traveling uh, different uh, directions and what is the final position of the person and here when you see this diagram here in the north, east, south and west is mentioned in the diagram. First it is uh, uh, the data is the person start at rest and uh, walk 2 meter towards north. So you draw 2 meters north and 1 meter towards east and 3 meter towards south and again uh, 3 meter in the east uh, west direction. So if we finally at the point P uh, at the position P. And how can you find out the position vector? You produce the line R vector from the origin to the point P and find out this displacement vector. Then that will give you the position of that particular person. So here the position is given by minus 2 i cap minus 3 j cap. Here the two axes are only negative axis. So minus for both axis x axis and y axis. Here minus 2 i cap because it meets at 2 divisions in x axis and 3 divisions in y axis. So minus 2 i cap minus 3 j cap. Distance and displacement. Next we are going to see about what is distance and what is displacement. Here distance is the actual path length travelled by an object in the given interval of time during the motion. And displacement is the difference between the final and initial positions of the object in the given interval of time when you see this diagram a person starts from this point and he travels some other way and meets at the point end and here what is the total distance covered it may be some 5 kilometer or 6 kilometer and what is the difference between initial and final position that is too small and it may be 1 kilometer so here the distance is the total distance travel and the displacement is the distance between the initial and the final positions and so here this is the difference when you see the example you can understand this in this the main thing is the distance is a scalar quantity 
whereas the displacement is the vector quantity and so here when you see here uh, this, uh, here you have given one diagram from the home you are going to the school daily 2 km and you are returning in the evening again 2 km so the total distance you are covering is 4 km but what about the displacement the displacement is 0 here the displacement covered is 0 it because your initial and final questions are the same because both your initial and final questions are only the home so there is no displacement but the total distance traveled is 4 km hope you understand from this example about the distance and displacement and here similarly here one problem is given an athlete is covering three rounds in this circular path and here what is the distance and three uh, displacement you have to find out and here when you take the distance it is 3 into 2 pi r because it, mm, he is taking three uh, rounds so 3 into 2 pi r substitute that and find out the distance which is 942 meter whereas the displacement is 0 because the athlete reaches the same point after three rotations from where he the three rounds from where he started so these are the differences between distance and displacement and next displacement vector and displacement vector is when you see this diagram initially uh, the particle is at uh, p1 and uh, after some time it reaches a point p2 and how can you find out the displacement now <coughs> draw the origin from the origin r1 vector and from the origin r2 vector and so what is r1 vector now r1 vector is given by x1 i cap plus y1 j cap plus z1 k cap and r2 is similarly given by x2 i cap plus y2 j cap plus z2 k cap now the displacement vector is given by the formula delta r vector is equal to r2 vector minus r1 vector this is very very important formula so you subtract the displacement vector both the displacement vectors so x2 minus x1 i cap plus y2 minus y1 j cap plus z2 minus z1 k cap so this is the displacement vector next you see this example you have to calculate the displacement vector also you have to find out the magnitude uh, so additionally you have to calculate the magnitude here when you see p and q are the two positions and r1 vector r2 and r1 vector is given by i cap plus j cap and r2 vector is given by 4 i cap plus 2 j cap so you when you see this diagram here r1 is 1 1 the divisions are 1 and 1 when you see r2 the divisions are 4 on x axis and 2 on the y axis so you will get r2 vector as 4 i cap plus 2 j cap and what is delta r vector formula r2 vector minus r1 vector so you subtract that and you will find out delta r cap is equal to 3 i cap plus j cap and here the magnitude is given by the formula square root of 3 square plus 1 square which is equal to square root of 10 so in this way you can find out the magnitude of the displacement vector next very important topic differential calculus this is a very very important topic in math and in physics uh, we shall use it in another form and here when you take the concept of a function here uh, suppose if you take a room the temperature of the room is continuously changing uh, so for after 5 minutes you will have one te temperature after 6 minutes you will have one temperature so it is continuously changing so the temperature of the surroundings is changing throughout the day and so the temperature is the function of time so mathematically this variation can be represented by the notation t of t that is t of t means temperature as function of time similarly you can find out the position of anything and here one ex example is given here f of x is equal to x square that is the function of x is equal to x square and you can take this x square is equal to y and here y is a dependent variable and x is called independent variable and when you calculus uh, what is calculus calculus is the branch of mathematics used to analyze the change of any quantity that is mainly we are finding out the change of any quantity here when you see here the variation of y with respect to the change in x is given by dv by dx and here this is called derivative in math dy by dx that is derivation uh, that is uh, the variation of y with respect to x you can call it as derivative of y with respect to x or dy by dx and that is given by limit delta x tends to 0 
delta y by delta x that is this delta x when it uh, reaches the value 0 then this expression is equal to dy by dx that is derivative of y with respect to x we shall see one example for this and here when you see this example y is a function of y is y is equal to x square and so the derivative dy by dx we are going to find out using the concept so when you are assigning the values actually first x1 2 and x2 3 then what happens to y1 y1 is x square so y1 is equal to 4 and y2 is equal to 9 you find out the difference between x and difference between y that is 1 and 5 so what is delta y by delta x that is equal to 5 similarly next you assign the value x1 2 and x2 2.5 that is previously assigned the value 3 now you are assigning the value 2.5 that is you are reducing slowly the value of x2 alone leaving x1 constant that is delta x tends to 0 means you have to um, nullify the difference between x1 and x2 that is you are slowly reducing the value of x2 when you see this tabular column you, you can understand that is initially you are keeping x1 as 2 and x2 as 2.25 that is you are assigning this value find out delta x and y1 and y2 and find out delta y by delta x next you reduce the value of x2 that is equal to 2.1 next you reduce the value 2.01 similarly you are reducing each and every time and find out delta y by delta x it is also the value is also reducing and here as delta x tend to 0 delta y by delta x approaches the limit given by the number 4 so we are doing this until this uh, delta x tends to 0 and so this process goes on and uh, uh, the main thing you have to understand here is if y is equal to x dy by dx is equal to 1 if y is equal to x square dy by dx is equal to 2x that is 2 times into x that is uh, in the formula if y is equal to x cube dy by dx is equal to 3x square in general this is the main formula if y is equal to x power n dy by dx is equal to n into x power n minus 1 this is very very important formula used in calculus suppose if have y is equal to sin x you have to differentiate with respect to x so dy by dx is equal to cos x if y is equal to cos x dy by dx is equal to minus sin x if y is equal to constant then dy by dx is equal to 0 that means if you differentiate any constant you will get only 0 so th that's all you should understand these formulae alone because these are very very important formula here when you see this example x is equal to given some equation a0 plus a1t plus a2t square here a1 a2 and a3 are constants so when you differentiate this the first term will become 0 so the required derivative is dx by dt is equal to 0 plus the second term will become a1 and the third term will become 2a2t because when you differentiate t square you will get a 2t so the answer is dx square by dt square is equal to 2a2 is the answer because uh, this is the second derivative second derivative means again you have to differentiate the equation so when you differentiate a1 that will become 0 and 2a to t when you differentiate t you will get 1 so the answer is 2a2 so in that way you have to derive again so this is the second derivative of dx square by dt square hope you understand girls